Hello, Mark from Sound Matters here, talking all things vinyl as always. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to record your vinyl records into your computer using a software package called Vinyl Studio. Now, I have done a tutorial on this before using the free program Audacity. This program does cost a little bit of money, but it's well worth it because it streamlines and makes the process as easy as it can possibly be. The beauty of Vinyl Studio and why I'm going to recommend it is it takes a lot of the hard work that's involved in a free program like Audacity out of the equation. Instead of you having to manually enter the track information, the album and artist information, it will connect to a database like Discogs, automatically pull in all of those track names, all of the information, and then based on that, it will deploy all those individual track markers so you can split your recording down into individual tracks without the hard work that's involved with Audacity in terms of manually putting in each individual marker yourself. So it really streamlines the process. And then if that wasn't enough, it can automatically connect to a, a music library like Apple Music and pull all that stuff in there when you export. Or alternatively, in, within the same program, you could burn the entire thing to a CD that's ready to listen to in your car or in your living room, stereo system, whatever that might be. As I say, it just takes a lot of the hard work out of the equation for a small upfront cost. Before we get into the software, you of course need to effectively connect your turntable to your computer so you can send the audio there for recording. There are three main ways that I can recommend you go about this. The easiest way, of course, is having a USB output on your turntable. If you've got one of those, you can connect directly, you're good to go. If you don't have one of those, then you could go get yourself one of these phono preamps like the Riga Phono Mini here, which has a USB output on the front panel, which then gives you the USB output to your your computer of course the best way and the way that i am going to go about doing this today is to have a high quality audio interface i'm using the ssl 2 plus which is a two channel audio interface which has very high quality sample rates and bit depths to get the highest quality possible recordings of your records links will be in the description of this video to all of the possible options so that you can get started as easily as possible today. What I don't recommend you do is go get one of these little cables here and essentially go straight out of your phono preamp or your receiver and connect it to your um, built-in computer sound card using one of these tiny little cables like this. The sound card built into your computer is very unlikely to have very good quality analog to digital converters within it, which means you just won't get very good quality results. You'll get very flat, very lifeless representations of your records, which ultimately renders this whole process pretty pointless. First thing we're going to do, of course, is go and download the software. So you can get that from alpinesoft.co.uk. I will put a link in the description of this video for your ease. But all you need to do is go to the download tab and select whether you want the package for Windows or Mac. I'm going to be on a Mac for this tutorial, but it's basically the exact same program. Before we can record our first album, we first need to correctly set our input device to actually record the records, and of course, the output device, which we'll use to hear back the recordings after they've been done. So to set the input device, we go to the check level tab, and then you will see a drop down here where you can select all of the options open to you that are connected to your particular machine. I am gonna select in my case, of course, the SSL2+, Plus because that's the audio interface I mentioned earlier that I'll be using to record my records. So I can select that and then that is now the device that we'll use. Of course, this isn't the only thing we need to set. We need to set the quality settings and the file format that we're going to record. So to do that, we can go to the recording options tab here and this will enable us to select the file format. There's a whole mo multitude of options here, but essentially what you need to know is the non-compressed options that I would re recommend are either the AIFF format or the WAV format. If you're on a Mac, AIFF is great because it goes straight into Apple Music and pulls in all of the track information very nicely. If you're on a PC, you may want to consider the .WAV format. You can record if you want to into compressed formats like MP3, or AAC. This of course reduces your file size greatly but of course compresses the audio somewhat so that you know you have some loss of quality. So I want the highest possible recording so I'm going to go for the AIFF format in my case. 
Now, the next thing we need to set is the audio quality of the recording. The handy thing about Vinyl Studio is if we go to this sample rates tab here, it will tell me all of the compatible sample rates um, that I can use with my particular input device. So this list will look different to you, but it will reveal what is compatible with your particular input device, be it the USB turntable, a uh, USB output from a phono preamp, or another audio interface, for example. So I can go all the way up to 192 kilohertz if I wanted to. CD quality, of course, is 44.1. So any of these settings are gonna produce a decent recording, but you may want to go slightly higher just to enable the best quality possible re result. And let's face it, hard drive space is actually you know fairly affordable these days so if you can record at a higher quality why not so i'm going to close this tab here and then we're actually going to select the audio settings that we want so i go to the file options for aiff up here and then i can set my actual sample rate and my bit depth from the drop downs that are provided to me so in my case i'm going for a bit of a middle ground at 96 kilohertz and 24 bits per sample because I kind of defy anyone who can hear uh, the benefit of all the way up to 192 kilohertz to be perfectly honest with you. This gives me a nice compromise in terms of really high quality sound but a slightly lower file size than would otherwise be if I went all the way up to that 192 kilohertz level. So to apply this we just click the apply button of course and to finalize the audio settings we then again click apply. To change the playback device, just go to the change playback device button and you'll have a similar drop down like the inputs where you can select the device that your speakers are connected to. So I can have the audio interface here, the same one, or if I wanted to, I could monitor it directly through my MacBook Pro speakers. It's up to you, however you want to hear your records back. I'm gonna stick with the SSL2 Plus and select that. And if I want to test that to make sure it's working, there's a handy little test button here. If you press this, you'll get a little tone that will indicate that, of course, you are able to hear through Vinyl Studio out to your playback device of choice. Now, all we need to do is click the apply button and that is basically set and good to go. The final setting I'm gonna talk about before we actually get into recording a record is the monitor recording button. This is really useful if you don't have a way through your audio interface or hardware whatever you're using to record to actually listen to the records as it's being recorded say for example a usb turntable connected direct to the computer if you enable this you'll be able to hear the recording as it comes in to your computer so that's very handy in my case i'm going to turn this off because i'm going to monitor through the hardware input of my ssl2 audio interface with our hardware all set up, we need to make sure that we're getting a good quality signal coming in, nothing that's distorting or anything that's too weak on the other hand. So go to the check level tab and in here, I recommend you go find essentially a loud part of your record and ensure that nothing is going up to the zero dB point, at which point we're actually gonna get clipping. So we wanna make sure we've got a strong signal coming in, but we don't want on those loud peaks of the record for it to pass or hit that zero dB point where we will get digital distortion. On the flip side, of course, we don't want the signal to be too weak either. We don't want it hovering down too low. We want to maximize that signal to noise ratio. Once you're happy with the input level, go to record or input a new album and then click the record button. This will then prompt us to put in the name of the artist and the album. So in this case, I'm doing the Beatles and we're going to do a copy of Sgt. Peppers. I'm doing a mono copy of Sgt. Peppers because I want a digital version of the mono mix, which is, of course, very difficult to find on streaming services and it does sound quite different so i want a handy digital file of this particular original mono release it's the first pressing that i've got so i want to maximize my enjoyment of that record so i can now click look up on album online and this will use the database like discogs to try and pull in all of that track information and more information in general about the record which we can use to split the album into individual tracks. So I'm gonna click continue and it will search the database. With an album that's as big as Sgt. Pepper's, it may struggle to pull all of them in because there'll be so many different variations. You can dismiss this because we'll see plenty of options come up now. And what we wanna look for is a version of the album that doesn't have any bonus tracks. So this first one isn't gonna work for me because it has a whole bunch of extra bonus tracks at the end. So I'll try the second one here. This one's labeled 1967, so that's pretty promising. And yes, this is the original track listing of the vinyl record. So this will work perfectly. I can also 
also fetch in album art. I'm going to click fetch and see what happens. And great, we've got a little thumbnail here of the album cover of Sgt. Peppers. So based on this, we've got everything we need and I can select use selected listing. It will then confirm that the changes have been applied. We can close this and then we can also close this tab here as well. So you can see it's pulled in some additional information. It's extended the album title to be a little bit more accurate there. It's given us the year, it's even put in the label. So that's really handy for us to have. One of the important things you need to check on this particular screen is that we, and I recommend you do this, is record all sides as one file. If we do this, what will happen with that needle record on needle down setting that we had earlier is like I said, when it gets to the end of side A and you lift it, it's going to pause the recording. It's not going to stop it. And then it allows you that time to flip over to side B and then drop this stylus down again and the recording will automatically start. We'll see how this works in a minute, but that means we get one continuous file, which makes the editing process in terms of the individual tracks much more seamless after we finish recording the entire album. So I recommend you keep that ticked and then we can click record. Vinyl Studio will now prompt us to ensure that the stylus is lifted. Once we press continue, Vinyl Studio will measure the input signal of the lifted cartridge. With this measured, the software can wait for the stylus to make contact with the record before any recording starts. Once it does, recording will commence and we just have to wait until the first side is finished. When we reach the end, simply raise the tone arm and Vinyl Studio will detect that the signal is back to what they call the needle up level, and it will then begin a countdown to pause the recording. This allows us some time to flip over the record while the process is paused. Once you're ready to go with the second side, simply press continue and Vinyl Studio will again wait for the stylus to make contact with the record before continuing the recording. When you reach the end of your record, you can simply hit the stop button and the recording process will cease having created one continuous file. With our album recorded, we can now split all the individual tracks. So to do this, we need to go to the split tracks menu up at the top here, and you'll see that Vinyl Studio has pulled in all the song names that we pulled in from Discogs and has attempted to intelligently place the track breaks where it thinks each individual track is located. We will need to do a little bit of tweaking here, but it gets us most of the way there and all the track names are written in there. So we don't have to do all that stuff that we did with Audacity in terms of manually typing in the song names ourselves. That is all done for us and it does a pretty good go, a good stab at putting the track markers in the right place as well. We certainly don't have to create every single track marker ourselves in most cases. So with this, we're going to have to tweak a little bit and it's best that we zoom in. I recommend that you get yourself a good set of headphones for this so that you can properly here the fade in and fade out of each individual track so i'm going to pop these on and i'm going to do a little bit of tweaking here for each individual track you'll see at the beginning we've got this track marker here marks the beginning of the album if we just click on the area we can start to play we can click anywhere when we zoom in to start playing from a certain section and we can see how accurate our track marker might be now that i could do is shifting a little bit but that's perfect. I can hear just as the slow fade intro comes in, that will start track one. The next one marker, well, the next marker is track two, of course, with a little help from my friends. So what I'm going to do here is just make sure that I zoom in nicely to see exactly where that song starts. That's perfect. Move on to the next one. I may skim uh, along some of this just on the video. Otherwise, you'll get a little bit bored watching me um, tweak every single one of these tracks. But you're getting the point. So I can go now to the third track and just see how that sounds. Not bad. Could do with shifting a little bit closer. Now, if you wanted to, you could individually um, remove some of the silent patches. So you could move one of these tags. So if I take the green one separately here, see how they separate? So I can separate it so I can actually get it to start here and remove some of the silent patch here where you can hear the dead space in between each track. Now, I actually don't like to do this. This is down to you. You can do this if you want to, but I like it to still sound like it came from a record. So I essentially just join them together and then I move them to the very beginning of where the next track starts. So you'll still hear 
it move through the dead space of the um the groove between tracks at the end of each individual track that works for me it's up to you if you want to tweak things and remove some of that dead space that's up to you so moving on to the next one then it's best to zoom out and then we can see here you're just looking for that space in between tracks let me move that a little bit quicker zoom in see how we're looking it's probably more like there and then we can just place the cursor just in front of it and press play or you can use your spacebar on your keyboard to press play and that is almost perfect around about there is perfect so moving on to the next one again zoom out move on to fixing a hole So this can be a little bit fiddly the first time you do it, but it's it's really quite intuitive compared to doing this on Audacity, in my opinion. That's perfect. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward this video whilst I do the rest of them. Okay, so we get to For the Benefit of Mr. Kite. And that's obviously the last song on side A. So we've got this space here where we flipped the record. So essentially we need this to be separated so that we end the end of side b and then it will essentially cut out all of this space here and then start seamlessly with track eight which is within without you of course so let's listen for the end of the record here it's much quicker to use your space bar than to use the play button every single time you can kind of just use your cursor click press space bar and it starts to play that is perfectly the end of that side and now we need to find the beginning of track eight Perfect. Right. And I'll go on to do the rest of these until we get to the end of the record and just show you how you can wrap up the record as well. Right. So that's the end of the album. And this is the end marker where we're going to end the final track. Now, of course, there is a bit of a run out groove on Sergeant Peppers. So I've included that on here. And then I'm going to take the end marker so they get a little bit of the run out groove here and end it at the end of the album. So that's basically it. All of the track markers are now lined up and we're ready to export our album. To export our album, all we need to do is click the Save Tracks button on the right-hand side here. So click that and it will tell you where they're going to be saved and you can choose your file format from here. So I am going to stick with the uncompressed file format, but you could choose any of these from this list and come back and make different versions at a later date if you wanted to as well. I'm going to select AIFF for this. And I'm also going to make sure that this is ticked here because I want it to automatically go into my Apple Music Library at the same time. So this will do that. It will automatically save them to the Apple Music Library as well and delete any duplicate tracks from the Music Library when this is ticked at the same time. If you're on Windows, this is a slightly different process, which I'll get to in a moment. But if you're on a Mac, this is a handy little extra feature that you can do at the export stage. So I'm going to click this and it will very quickly save the individual files. So you can see that's done. And if we go to the folder where I saved them. So this is the Vinyl Studio folder where I've got some of my exports here. And you can see it saves each individual track perfectly as individual songs. And they're all labeled absolutely perfectly. But also the real magic, I think, is that it's gone automatically into my Apple Music Library. Because if we look at the recently added, there it is. It just automatically did this. Here's another recording I did just earlier today, the Otis Blue uh, recording that I did of the 1965 LP from Otis Redding. So if we click on here, there it is with artwork and everything, individual tracks ready to enjoy through Apple Music. Really good. If you're on a PC, you can automatically add them to what is now Apple Music, but was called iTunes. This is still labeled as such on my computer. But if you go to the iTunes or Apple Music media folder, and of course this will look slightly different on a PC, but just to try and help you out here, there is a folder called Automatically Add to Music. So if you enable this to be the folder where you save and export your tracks, then it will automatically throw those into Apple Music. They'll come up as, yeah, they'll come up automatically. So if you want to do that on a PC, it's still possible. There's just one extra step you need to follow. If you're struggling with that in any way, drop me a uh, comment in the comment section and I will help you out as best as I can.
There's a lot more I could cover about Vinyl Studio and I will do in future videos, for example, how to clean up the audio. So there's a clean up audio tab here, removing pops and clicks and that kind of side of things, if that's something you want to do. And also, of course, the burn to CD function as well, among many other functions that this program can do. It's a really impressive program. It kind of looks like something from the 1990s software wise, but looks can be deceiving. And I really do believe this is the easiest way for you to rip your record to digital files on your computer. So that's the end of the tutorial for today. Do drop your comments and questions down in that comment section as always. As I say as well, all of the links to the equipment that you could possibly use will be in the description of this video so that you can get started if you're not already set up in that way. There's also a direct link to the Vinyl Studio software so you can download it and get started. Again, thank you ever so much. If you're new to this channel, please do consider subscribing. But until that next video, uh, do enjoy the music Keep spinning and we'll see you in that next video.